In our second match with eight strikes, Marshall Holman, 248, Tom Baker, 226. Now it's 32-year-old Holman against 19-year-old slugger named Jimmy Keith of West Palm Beach, Florida. He's on the right, and he's ready. Chris, of all the players that have come out in the last few years, power players, even the pros stand behind this young man and watch the shot. If you've never seen this young man bowl, he made the championship round at the Miller Lite Championship in Milwaukee, lost his first match. But watch this release, watch the power. They almost crumbled. What an onslaught by the bowling ball. And here's the man with a 248 victory over Tom Baker's 226. Holman, no slouch in the power department as our tournament leader, Bob Hanley. So the fans of the home run hitters in bowling, stay tuned for the next 45 minutes. You'll see nothing but pins being driven straight back, sideways, and every which way. Now, Holman, the hot hand, 248 the first game. First shot, semifinal match. Didn't get the 10. Holman, who had been light in the pocket or solid every shot in the first match, hits just in between, leaves what we call the half 10. And watch how Holman attacks spares. These big hookball players both still convert spares very well. Holman, with what we call a spin technique, he breaks his wrist back, backwards, instead of cupping it up, and spins the ball. That cuts all the roll off of it. It doesn't bite the lane service. A very accurate shot. Beautifully done. Seemed to be a little bit apprehensive, but no concern. Marshall Holman, who is adjusting his shoelaces, wiping the lane oil or conditioner off the ball, obviously to get a smooth roll on every shot, has everything prepared. As you alluded to, Chris, taking a little more time. Maybe he's mm -hmm. learned a lesson. He bowled very well that first match, no doubt. Once he gets set, though, pulls the trigger in a hurry. That's the key. And he now has left a 2-5. Now, we're going to watch his mental approach to the game from now on. The head pin to the sideboard knocks out the four and seven and eight pins, but leaves the two and five pins. Holman, as I said, a good spare shooter, but any player is likely to chop a two-five split at any time, so he has to be very careful. And obviously the first two balls, Marshall Holman lost off his hand. Remember, he put a piece of tape in on his 11th shot in that match, the last match. Maybe he needs another piece of tape to get the good lift on the ball. Spin shot down the left side. And there you are. Rubble. And this is the man who's such a perfectionist that if things don't go the way he thinks they should, he often falls apart. So with that open frame coming in the second. The ball trying to hold the spin back, but takes just a little break, picks the two off the five, gives an opening to young Jimmy Keith here in the opening two frames. I first heard about him from a pal of mine in Florida, Herb Glass from Lake Worth, who uh, collects guns. <laughs> he said there's a real shooter from West Palm Beach, Strong and here he is. Strongest I've ever seen. Look at him cup that ball, roll it back on his wrist. He's double Chris. He can roll his thumb. Back. Now look at the fingers go straight through the ball. People say, how do pro bowlers get the hook? There's the epitome of power. Nothing around the side of the ball. All uplift, all power. Watch this release. He's a little bit wild sometimes, but when he cuts it loose, look out. It's such action. 5'11", 160 pounds. Three in a row for Jimmy Keith. Now, watch this release. I have a feeling you're going to see this a lot more in professional. Look at him roll it back on his wrist, double-jointed. Now shovels it out, never, ever goes around the side of the ball, and he makes those pins talk. strike. I've been 20 titles, four majors, this man. What a career. You're right, Chris, and uh, we all have a tendency to uh, say lazy strike after watching Keith's ball dynamite the pins out all week long, but 
by no means does Holman throw a weak bowling ball. And don't count him out in any match. He trails by 33 against an inexperienced young bowler. Holman will definitely put the pressure on him in the next few frames. I like his preparation. There he is, right back with a double in our third match of the afternoon. The semifinal prelude to the final match. We'll be back. Fifth frame shot. Jimmy Keith of West Palm Beach has left the four pin after stringing four. We had to uh, leave the action because we're running behind our time schedule, but Bo, his strike in the fourth was something to behold. Well, Chris, he uh, kind of panicked on the way to the line, lost that big hook, crossed over, got a Brooklyn strike, and right now, watch this spear shot. You talk about killing the shot. He throws it hard and straight. We timed his shot at upward at 24 miles an hour on this. <laughs> Two bounces. All right, let's go back and look at that fourth frame strike. Watch it at the end. Well, when you have tremendous power, you have to sacrifice a little accuracy. Obviously, Jimmy Keith, when you see the reaction, this ball just turns left about 45 feet down the line, crosses over. Look at the ball. The ball actually took out the seven pin. You talk about a hook. It's solid on the Brooklyn. It almost had the ball hook in the left channel. Holman coming back. Trails by 32. Has two strikes working. Big shot. Trails to only 22. Marshall Holman, if you just joined us, won his previous match over Tom Baker, 248-226. The sashaying Marshall Holman makes the pins dance. He drives the four, five, seven, all together, and he likes to strike. He's a little bit sedated now, but if he gets this strike here, he'll definitely show Jimmy Keith what it's all about. This is going to be a very tough match of giant power bowling balls. Look at him. Now Marshall Holman has four in a row, and Jimmy Keith's lead is 12 pins. He'll now be shooting the six with a spare up. Jimmy Keith, nicknamed Yaba, Y-A-B-A, because all the players like Jimmy come out of the Young American Bowling Alliance. He was a junior bowler just two years ago. Here he is bowling for a major championship on the professional bowlers tour against the great one, Marshall Holman. Keith, a 12-pin lead, six frame. Took some speed off that shot, leaving the 6-10. Keith, obviously a little bit off his target here on the right-hand lane in the fourth frame. He crosses all the way over. It's a good break. It's a strike to extend the streak to four. Leaves a four pin in the fifth frame and now has left the 6-10 spare with a conversion. He would be just 10 pins ahead. Watch how he throws this rocket shot. That's where he gets his name at the spares. All right. There you have Jimmy Keith. Our Schlitzmaul Liquor Professional Boxing tomorrow. The WBA Junior Middleweight Championship, Mike McCallum versus talent Milt McCrory. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's live from Phoenix. And then a super lightweight fight, Meldrick Taylor and Primo Ramos. What a doubleheader that is. Chris, Taylor will knock out Ramos. What do you think about McCallum and McCrory? That's pretty even. Two talented fighters. I'll take McCrory. And he leaves the 2458 now. Jimmy Keith, the teenager in the field at 19. The action of Keith's ball, he comes in light. The head pin goes to the sideboard, but not quite enough action. He just gets the seven out and leaves four difficult pins. Not only is it a difficult spare, but in this situation, he struggled the last three frames. He needs to convert this spare to maintain a six pin lead. Otherwise, Holman would have the lead. And there he does some chopping of his own giving him 152 through the seventh, and now he trails by five. Too much speed, too far to the left. Right now, Jimmy Keith has dug himself a hole. He has given Holman a five-pin lead. We'll be right back after this. It's the grand finale. Bowling's best take aim at the third jewel in their triple crown, the Firestone Tournament of Champions, next Saturday on ABC Sports. And here in Connecticut, the defending champion is in the red shirt. 
Since we're running behind our time schedule, he bowled in the seventh, he left the seven. Marked with a spare after four in a row. Now uh, with a four pin lead, he's shooting in the eighth frame. Here's his opponent, 19 year old Jimmy Keith. hit and he's left the four. Both power players, uh, I don't know whether it, I can't say it's fear or respect, both getting tentative here in the last three frames. Holman normally at this point in a match when he has a lead would take the bull by the horns, amp that ball up, go with a little extra power, and he's been tentative here in the seventh frame. He left the seventh pin, once again the eighth frame, floats it a little high and leaves the four pin. A spare here would give him a three pin lead with just two frames remaining. James Keith, press device on, filling with the rosin. So three pens now. The lead by Marshall Holman after an open eighth frame. Jimmy Keith, who finished second overall in the field of 160. He finished fifth this year. We asked him the nervousness in Milwaukee. What did he learn? Well, hopefully my nerves won't bother me today as much as they did the first time. But first six frames, I was nervous. But after that, I struck out. Hopefully I can do that all 12 frames today. Well, he started with four in a row. Had a strike in the last frame, the eighth now in the big ninth. Needs a strike to take the lead. Leaving a two. Just lost that ball on the downswing, a bit nervous again. His nerves not being settled in that position gave Holman a tremendous break there where if he could have struck, he could have put Holman on the ropes. The match is not over, but this young man has to keep a, his chin up. The, he still has a chance. Spare in the night, Jimmy Keith, West Palm Beach. The winner of this match will meet the tournament leader, Bob Handley of Pompano Beach, Florida. Here's where Marshall Holman's experience, Chris, I believe will come in. He knew that he had a chance to fall behind Keith if Keith could have struck there in the ninth frame. He saw that little bit tentative shot by James Keith. Let's see what Marshall does. He should really strap it up here. He knows he's in the driver's seat. professional shot. Holman, no doubt about this shot. Drives through the one, three, the ball takes out the five and nine pins. The rest of the pins do their job. Holman's doing his job. For Marshall Holman right now, a strike and then any good count, he would lock out Jimmy Keith. If he does not strike, Keith can come up in the 10th frame and still win the match. turnaround. I've never seen Marshall Holman in this posture. He's put himself in a position where he's just handing the match to Jimmy Keith. Holman should still take his time and knock over two pins. It's important to maintain the count. I don't know if he's thinking. Yeah, he is. Now, what this sets up is a situation all in Jimmy Keith's favor. All that Keith needs to do is get a mark, and he's handed the match. And this young man never being in this position before. Let's see how he reacts. He struggled a little bit. He started very quickly, struggled in the last five frames. Let's see if he can take advantage of this tremendous break handed him by Marshall Holman. Mm. I hit, and he has left the 3-6. Marshall Holman in his fourth appearance on television this year. The big boys with the pressure on each other cannot let the ball go here under the under the gun. And as my Marshall turns around to talk to 
Terry Chouinard, his, his girlfriend, he says, Jimmy needs a spare. If Keith spares, he wins the match. If he doesn't, Holman goes on to meet Hanley. Just nicking the left side of the three pin. So Keith will meet Hanley, the professional bowlers tour will continue after this message and a word from our local station.